It was a disaster. Not a single sound came from Voyager 2 in July 2023 after NASA made a serious mistake. But then the probe suddenly started transmitting again, and the first signal from Voyager 2 after the communication breakdown came as a surprise. This probe has now traveled more than 18 billion kilometers and is invaluable to science. Losing Voyager 2 at this delicate point in the mission would be a tragedy. What had actually happened? Why had this probe, which had been traveling in space for more than 45 years, suddenly lost radio contact? In July 2023, panic broke out at NASA's communications center. Voyager 2 had gone silent. Those responsible were shocked. Voyager 2 had simply lost radio contact following an erroneous command that changed its antenna orientation. During a routine check, NASA's control team had inadvertently sent an erroneous command to Voyager 2, causing the spacecraft to turn its communications antenna away from Earth. Given the enormous distance of over 18 billion kilometers, correcting this error was a monumental challenge. Each signal from Earth took more than 17 hours to reach the probe, and it took just as long for a response to arrive back on Earth. Days went by without a signal being received, adding to the concern. A permanent loss of communication with Voyager 2 would not only have meant the loss of a historic mission, but also the loss of an invaluable source of data about interstellar space. In a last-ditch effort to re-establish communications, the NASA team sent a series of commands in the hope that Voyager 2 would receive one of them and respond accordingly. It was a race against time, as the probe's power supply and ability to receive commands diminished with each passing day. At the same time, Every day that this probe sends data from space is valuable to the scientists. The sweating and worrying continued into August 2023. Some scientists had already given up hope, and NASA had to seriously consider publicly announcing the loss of the probe. Then the unbelievable happened. Voyager 2 responded again. The signal was weak but unmistakable and was a clear sign that the probe had received the command and carried it out correctly. The relief and joy in the control center were boundless. The NASA team had achieved the seemingly impossible. Communication had been re-established with one of the most distant man-made objects in the universe. This meant that Voyager 2 had also successfully overcome a crisis. In 2022, after more than 45 years, the sister probe Voyager 1 found itself in an awkward situation. The telemetry data was no longer correct, and for a few days it seemed as if the probe had lost its orientation in space. But here too, NASA showed itself to be in control. After weeks of troubleshooting, those responsible discovered a fault in the onboard computer. Here too, the engineers delivered a brilliant performance. Similar to Voyager 2, they sent an instruction over 20 billion kilometers. The probe changed the onboard computer system, and after hours of hoping, a response finally came back. How long these two veterans of space exploration will continue to send data is unclear. However, the scientists hope to be able to maintain contact with both Voyagers until around 2030. Then they will disappear forever into the depths of space and radio contact will be lost due to a lack of power. Voyager 2 at the Magical Threshold of the Heliosphere The scientists had imagined everything in detail. For decades, there were concrete ideas of what it would look like at the end of our solar system. Computer simulations calculated everything precisely. And then the surprise happened. On November 5, 2018, Voyager 2 approached the magic boundary of the solar system. The researchers noticed that the probe was unerringly approaching this threshold by, among other things, a change in the ambient radiation and particle density. No one had ever seen this threshold, and no probe had ever been there before. What would Voyager 2 find there, billions of kilometers from Earth? Naturally, the researchers hoped that the probe would confirm their data and calculations. But then came the disappointment. Voyager 2 reported completely unexpected data. This repeated the unpleasant truth for the scientists, as Voyager 1, the twin probe, had already traveled across this distant threshold in 2012 and had transmitted similar data. Neither probe confirmed the researchers' assumptions. The heliosphere does not end gently like a beach, but more like a wall or an invisible bulwark. That was surprising. Ever since Voyager 1 had sent this data, there had been confusion. Had the probe perhaps traveled across the threshold at a particular point that was structured differently? No, after Voyager 2 transmitted almost exactly the same impressions and measurement data, it was clear that the sill of the solar bubble is quite solid and bumpy everywhere. 
This groundbreaking discovery once again proved to our scientific community that we can't know anything for sure until we, or probes, have been there. It confirmed once again that we know very little about the universe for sure, and that theories are just theories, not truths. Our universe is unimaginably large and contains countless phenomena, objects, structures, and peculiarities, very few of which we can visit or examine on sight. We have to rely on model calculations and hypotheses, and these are often wrong, as the Voyagers proved once again. The day Voyager 2 flew over the threshold of the heliosphere was another moment when a piece of the puzzle fell into place in our cosmological worldview. Now, knowing for sure how our solar sphere ends brings more clarity, but also new questions. Just the question of how the hard threshold at the end of the solar bubble is formed will keep researchers busy for several years. Scientists spontaneously explain this with the interaction between the solar wind and the interstellar medium. Presumably, the pressure of the interstellar space causes streams of particles to pile up at the edge of the solar sphere, which then form an almost solid threshold or a dense outer skin. However, this means that the interstellar medium has a different structure than we previously thought, and the probes actually delivered surprising measurement data here too. There are far more particles in interstellar space than previously assumed. You can imagine the heliosphere as a huge bubble. This bubble is formed and maintained by the constant solar wind. The sun envelops itself and its planets in this protective balloon of particles. The main difference between the heliosphere and interstellar space is its density and temperature. At the outer edge of this sphere, the two media meet and an interaction occurs. This outer edge is the heliopause and it extends between 10 and 20 billion kilometers from the Sun. In total, the heliosphere has a diameter of around 30 billion kilometers. This structure in which we live is not static. The entire sphere travels as a closed unit through the galaxy and the universe. The solar system is located in one of the outer spiral arms of the Milky Way. We are probably moving through the galaxy here in our bubble at 828,000 kilometers per hour. And our galaxy is moving through the universe at around 2.1 million kilometers per hour. 1977 was perfect for the start. At the beginning of the 1970s, a researcher happened to recognize a special constellation of planets and had an idea. Soon the outer planets would be lined up as perfectly as they are every 176 years. During their orbits around the Sun, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune could be in completely different quadrants of the system. But during this constellation, all four should be almost in a row close to each other, so that a probe could easily reach all four planets. The constellation also brought the planets so close to Earth that the flight time to Neptune was a whole 12 years shorter. NASA had to seize this opportunity. Two simple and almost identical probes were constructed in a rush. Voyager 1 and 2 got by on a minimal budget and were launched at record speed. On August 20th, 1977 and September 5th, 1977, Voyager 1 and 2 were launched on board Titan Centaur rockets on their iconic journey into space. Little did anyone know at the time that more than 45 years later, these two probes would still be flying through space, breaking record after record. After passing Jupiter and Saturn, Voyager 2 used the gravitational pull of the two planets to perform a gravitational maneuver that took it to Uranus and Neptune. For the first time, humans saw bright blue Uranus in all its beauty, and Voyager 2 photographed deep blue Neptune in all its splendor for the first time. In addition to the images, Voyager 2 provided groundbreaking measurement data. The probe showed the wafer-thin rings around Uranus for the first time, photographed the most violent storms in the solar system on Neptune, and discovered previously unknown moons of the two ice giants. These were historic moments for science and humanity. When will Voyager 2 reach the nearest star? Voyager 2 will travel through complete darkness for another 40,000 years or so, then a light will appear again for the first time. It will probably be Ross 248. Computer calculations have shown that the probe's course will take it directly there, but it's unclear whether the probe will be captured by this system. The probe is probably too small and too light to enter the sphere of another star. Voyager 2 will therefore remain in the interstellar medium and fly on and on, until after thousands of years the next star passes by. Nobody knows how long these probes will continue their journey through space. They may simply break apart at some point, or they may still be flying millions of years from now. We humans are optimists. Just in case there is life out there in space somewhere, 
we have attached a calling card of our civilization to the two voyagers. Should aliens ever get their hands on the probes, they will find two golden records and a simple set of instructions inside. Designers and scientists have created the records and the mechanism in such a way that any technologized species should be able to play the disks. Now, we don't know who or what is out there in space. The disks could also end up in a world where there are only animals or plants. They could fall into a corrosive ocean of acid somewhere or fall into the hands of a species that doesn't know what to do with the disks. Less optimistic people even fear that our well-intentioned greetings could end up in the hands of predatory aliens in outer space. Become a subscriber now and be part of every new video highlight.